So we went, we've been sitting with them. Uh, I went out with the trackers after breakfast and we found them at around 11. And then uh, we were back and we left uh, Johnson, one of the trackers, sitting with the leopards till I came out. And they literally didn't do anything for three hours. And then literally 30 seconds before TV, pandemonium. But uh, it's incredible. It looks like they're going to rest up a bit again for a little while. Uh, there seems to be a bit of a stalemate happening. They're both quite full, so there's no reason for them to actually move too far off. But he's really, really determined to try to get to that area behind us, and she's very determined to, to keep him away. I am a little bit worried with those cub calls, those oop, oop calls, that he might have already killed the other cub. But let's hope she's managed to keep it safe. There we go. There's Mr. Sindile. Having a snooze. There we go. There's the cub call again. Now oh, it's been amazing. He's been calling to her like he used to. And every time he calls to her, she growls. What a way to start the Father's Day weekend. Absolutely amazing. As he lifted his head, she started growling. He's popped his head back down again. Any little movement he makes generally causes her. Well, we're going to sit here and hopefully we'll be back with a lot more action in a short while. But I know James has been watching in the tent and I'm sure he's as excited as I am. I am excited, but I'm also jealous because I'm sitting in the tent here. But we have said some amazing rover stuff. Uh, the rover is parked down by the waterhole. Apparently I sound a bit soft. How do I sound now? 40 seconds, 40 until we go back to the TV, everybody. <sighs> Still a bit soft. Can you turn my levels up? Or shall I speak a bit louder? Are we okay now? Sorry about this. Wonderful internet audience. Thank you for being with us. It's so great to have our old faithfuls with us. It's like a whole bunch of you sitting on the back of the car, patting us on the back and encouraging us. It's really wonderful. I'm going to be quiet now. Here we go. Welcome back, welcome back everybody. What an astonishing start. You are on a live safari here in the iconic Kruger National Park. We've just had a leopardess with her young cub wandering about the place. There's some conflict there that Brent's told you about. Jamie's sitting with a hyena, Brent's with an elephant. There's been buffalo at the waterhole. It's all go here. Now, we are in the middle of Africa. We are on the northeastern fringes of South Africa, quite possibly the most beautiful country on all of planet Earth. And in the northeast corner of South Africa is the Kruger National Park. And on the western fringes of that, of course, the Sabi Sand, a collection of private nature reserves where we find ourselves now. Off to the far east, we've got Mozambique. And that's off to the north, we've got Zimbabwe. And all together, eight and a half million acres of untrammeled wildlife wilderness wonderland where the animals are free to come and go as they please. Now let's zoom in here. I'll show you a little bit about where we are. We are on six, uh, sorry, two, 3,000 acres of Juma. That's Juma, wonderful piece of land. And Jamie's sitting around there. Uh, on Arathusa here, 
2,000 acres of wonderful land here. Brent is sitting over there with those two incredible leopards. And down here, we also go to a place called Cheetah Plains, a beautiful spit of land with lovely clearings where the cheetahs roam, somewhere around there. Bushwalk, Steph is around here. Let's go straight back to those unbelievable leopards. Welcome back, she's calling for the cub. So, the young male's behind us, she's on the move again. And she's looking for that cub. I'm gonna stick with the female. It's likely that if that young male is still gonna keep following her. Now, I'm just gonna warn everyone out there that just gotta be a little bit careful because there is a possibility that he might have already killed that cub and it's not uncommon for female leopards to pick up their dead offspring and walk around with them and in some circumstances even eat them. But we are on a live African safari following this incredible female leopard called Shadow through the bush. And we're on Arethusa private game reserve. And we've actually got two leopards. I could not have asked for a more fantastic way to start Father's Day. That's her calling for the cub. So you guys can hear that sound. So we're going to stick with her. Let's have a look behind us to make sure that the young male's not following yet. Can you see him, Vim? Is he following? Doesn't look like he's following just yet, but let's stick with the female. So she's the dominant female leopard in this area. And uh, we have been blessed with incredible sightings of her and of her young male over the course of the last year that, and a bit that I've been here. And it just isn't this incredible. This is alive. But if you want to ask any questions about what's going on, uh, use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you want to send a shout out to your dad on Father's Day, you can do that today and we'll be doing dad shout outs on Father's Day tomorrow. I can hear him responding to her calls. She's on her way. Huge safari live. Welcome to Terry. Welcome on the back of the vehicle. And I hope you are excited as I am to be following leopards through the African bush live. Terry, you'd like to, will we ever get a chance to see a big adult male leopard? Well, if our luck continues like this, who knows, maybe one will join this sighting. That's the most amazing thing about being out in the bush and being live. Anything could happen. And with her calling and making all this noise, if there is the dominant male, Tingana, around, he will definitely come into this area. We have him. We can hear, we can hear the, the young male responding and he's actually walking back towards us. This is the area she's been trying to keep that young male out of. Okay. We might get some, some action shortly. He started following her again. Let's try to get in the best position if she does go for him again. 
Now look at that body language change from her. Look at those flat ears. Look at those flat ears. And he's still about 15 minutes or uh, 15 minutes, 15 meters away. So while we wait here, she's going to lie down. Jamie has got another one of Africa's apex predators to show you. From one spotted predator to another, what an incredible safari experience you are all enjoying. And you've arrived at exactly the right moment because this scene was one where a saga that is as old as the African bush in its current form played out just hours ago. And as we look upon this grisly sight, you can see what remains of a buffalo and a spotted hyena that is gorging itself on whatever meat it can get out of it. I haven't even had a chance to introduce myself. It's been such an incredible afternoon. But my name is Jamie, and this afternoon the man behind the camera is Brian, and the thumb, of course, making an appearance as always. Now, I'm whispering because while we've been sitting here, the game has changed completely, and we've actually found ourselves between the hyena and a herd of elephants that is slowly making their way towards us. So that's why I'm keeping my voice down. On this windy afternoon, I don't think that the elephants have realized that the hyenas are here. And elephants absolutely do not appreciate the presence of predators. And they could well, at any moment when they work out that the hyenas are here, come charging through. So we're just gonna keep my voice nice and soft so that we don't startle them on any way. Now on this special Father's Day weekend you might not have been able to take your dad out to the middle of the African bush but I think we have the next best thing. A live safari. We're sitting right in the middle of the bush far away from any of the roads watching this incredible scene play out in front of us. Uh, while our hyena munches away and we keep an eye on what's happening with these elephant, it seems like Steph is out on foot and he has also encountered a big grey animal. Well, welcome. Welcome to the... Cool. cool. Yeah, as I pulled out to you and you turn around, every. Right, well it seems as though that Steph has lost signal. As you can imagine, there's a bit of difficulty with bringing you a live bushwalk straight from the center of the African bushveld. But that gives me the perfect opportunity to tell you about the story of what I saw in this exact spot first thing this morning. Uh, this morning I was actually following two lionesses with big swimming, swinging bellies and faces full of blood. And I followed them for ages because I was just convinced that they had come from some kind of kill. And after some rather dramatic and almost heroic, if I do say so myself, off-roading, we encountered one of the most incredible sightings I have seen in all my time working in the Sabi sand. What happened was the vegetation around us just exploded into these crackles and cackles and eerie howls of hyenas charging forward as they chased away the two lionesses that were coming back to enjoy a bit more of their breakfast and tur they turned on their tail and sprinted away and about ten I would say spotted hyenas crowded around the carcass and cackled out their victory. It was absolutely phenomenal but it's not over yet because those lionesses did not go far away from where we are at all and there's still a chance that they might decide now that they've managed to recruit an extra lioness into their midst to come back and reclaim their prize. There's not much left though for them. There's just a little bit of head and a bit of skin and it's been largely devoured. It also gives me the most incredible opportunity to introduce you to our hyena clan of Juma, characters that we have come to know and love over the many months and years that we have been interacting with them. And let me tell you something, despite their reputation, and perhaps the story I just told you doesn't serve to enhance it, 
These are my absolute, hands down, favorite predator. They are absolutely phenomenal. There is an intelligence to looking into a hyena's big brown eyes that you probably will find difficult to match anywhere else in the animal kingdom. We've heard them described as malignant and malicious and thieves and dirty scavengers and ugly. I hope that by the end of this afternoon safari at least we will be able to change your mind as to exactly what a hyena is really made of. While our spotted predator munches down on whatever's left of the buffalo and crunches the bones away, let's head back across to Brent and find out what these leopards are doing because this is a situation I have never seen in my entire life. She's still calling incessantly for the cub and the young male still is still getting confused and answering her. But we did <coughs> listen to that. <coughs> Her calls are getting louder and louder, more distressed and more distressed. Remember, we are alive. You are witnessing this incredible behavior at the exact same time as, as we are. <coughs> stick with her. I can't see the young male but he's probably going to keep following her. So we're going to stick with her and remember any questions you want to ask, anything you'd like to know about leopards or what's happening in this exact moment, uh, anything I might have not explained properly, you can ask me again and you can do that by using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. He was sleeping over there, just want to double check where he is. While we stick with her. 